Hey, how you doing everybody? It's going to be a Beatles update, which has been a while since I made one. So, got some interesting stuff here. I got vinyl records, uh, also have uh, some CDs, and some memorabilia. And uh, let's get started with the vinyl first. Now, the first one I'm going to show is this. It's a Japanese uh, Beatles record, the Please Please Me album. Um, is it original? I mean, uh, I think it is. Uh, I'll tell you a little story behind this one. Basically, there's a, uh, a person from Japan who comes to my record store. He comes there maybe once a year or less frequently than that, maybe every couple of years. And he buys a lot of stuff from uh, the record store. He's been in business with the, the owner for 20 years or something like that comes in and buys a lot of American albums and takes them back home with him and sells them. And he always gives the, the owner a free gift. And this was the free gift that he gave him that, uh, of course, immediately went for sale. Uh, at first, I didn't really buy this because it was kind of pricey. Uh, so I didn't really want to spend the money on it, even though I'd love to have this. Uh, what happened is, also in, the, in, in a batch uh, that we recently had gotten was... Uh, Three of the 1970s style with the numbers of the OB strips on here with the numbers on them. There, uh, he had the three albums there. Uh, one of them was Hey Jude with the OB strip. Another one was uh, Let It Be with the OB strip. And the other one was the blue album, 67 to 70, with the OB strip. Those are the ones with the apple and the numbers on them. Um, with the, you know, the, the flag all across. So... I decided at first to buy those three. Instead of buying this, I spent some money on those three and I took them home with me. And then I really decided, on second thought, I don't really need those. I mean, I, I, I mean, it was nice to have them, but I was still remembering this album being left behind in the store and that maybe it made more sense to take those other three albums back and exchange them for this one. And that's really what I did. So for the price that I paid there, plus maybe a little more, I got this. Because as I've often said, as much as I like to have every kind of pressing of every album from every country, when it comes right down to it, if push comes to shove, I'd rather have something with a different cover. It's a, a different cover that I like, you know. Um, I really don't get interested in necessarily in having, uh, say, 20 copies of the Please Please Me album with the original cover on it, just in a different country. Unless there's some kind of difference. Even the lettering can be different. But as long as there's some kind of substantial difference on it. So anyway, let's look at this. Uh, I've blabbed on enough about it. Um, I'm going to be very careful <coughs> opening up the sticky back here. I'm going to have to just be a little patient because I'm, I don't want to damage anything. Okay, we're good. Okay, there it is. It's front cover. Back cover. Beautiful shape. Mint. Um, again, I mean, I don't know everything. I mean, maybe uh, somebody can let me know. Is this an original? I mean, uh... Inside. Because it's on, I should mention, the reason I'm asking if it's an original is because I have it on the red wax, which I'm going to show you. Original or not, I mean, I'm thrilled to have this. You know, the Japanese albums, of course, are so well done. I, you know, I just uh, didn't know why I was kind of not buying this right away. Why I let it stay. This was expensive. Here it is on the red wax. Kind of transparent red wax. You know, I uh, it was expensive and I knew I really needed this, but after I bought a few other things, like I said, those other Japanese obis from the 70s, I said, you know, I mean, 
doesn't it make more sense to, to just to get this? So I did it. And I'm happy to have it. Um, I haven't played it yet. When it comes to certain albums, I don't really want to play them, you know? I think I just want to have them and keep them preserved nice. This might be one of those cases where I do that with this. I'm going to have to uh, take care of putting this away properly later. Okay, uh, next item I'm going to show is this is a, a uh, British release. And it's a 10-inch record. It's uh, Savage Young Beatles. Tony Sheridan and the Beatles. Finally, after a long time, I finally went out and bought some 10-inch outer sleeves, which I uh, didn't have. I was taking the big 12-inch ones and folding them over. Now all i got to do is try to find a lot of these 10-inch paper sleeves. I need these for a lot of 10-inch records. And there it is, with the label. The next item I'm going to show you, I managed to get just for one dollar. Hold on a minute. All right, got this for a dollar. I love the cover on this, and it's in beautiful, beautiful shape. We got Beetle Rama, the fabulous new sound from England. I like collecting all kinds of novelty records and, uh, you know, different covers. I'm pretty sure this is an album that's been around under another cover, various covers, but uh, I like this cover a lot. Okay, now I'm going to give a shout out to Marv. Marv G, how you doing out there? Marv, I hear that in 2015 you're going to be making videos here again, at least you said so, right here in the vinyl community, on the open here, public. I hope you do that, because I'm looking forward to them. But anyway, Marv showed this album in his video and kind of like uh, beat me to the punch here. I thought I was going to be kind of unique in having this, but I'm glad we both have it. I mean, it's a great thing to have. There was a, a person who came into my uh, record store that had a lot of uh, audiophile stuff, MoFi stuff, and uh, this is one of the things I got from his collection. Um, and I got this after the fact, it was still hanging around. It's a John and Yoko Double Fantasy album on Nautilus Super Disc Limited Edition, Geffen Records. I don't know how well this shows, but Right away, this is striking because it's a different color tone. It's just like a brownish kind of tone, whereas the original Double Fantasy album is a black and white tone cover. <clears throat> well, inside here... I didn't even realize there was a poster in it. There's a poster of John and Yoko. And I have it in a super sleeve. It almost makes you think it's blue vinyl, but it's not. <laughs> it's black. put this all the way later. Just have to be careful of the sticky back. Make sure it's okay. Okay, also pick this up, which is very unusual. Another Japanese album, Wings Greatest with the Obi strip here. Really nice looking Obi strip. Oops, almost dropped the album. Um, inside has probably got the poster and all. I don't really want to take it out. It's a little difficult. Okay. Um, I already had this album. Uh, I don't remember if it has shrink on it. I don't think I had this in the shrink. It's the John Lennon rock and roll album for 75. This one's in the shrink. It's an original. And it's got the 
price code on it. Okay, uh, here's a copy of the 1999 Yellow Submarine song track album. Which I already got at the Beetle Fest this year. But the Beetle Fest copy that I got was black vinyl. This one is not black vinyl. This one finally, I'm happy to say I've got on the yellow vinyl. Oh God, I'm, dro I'm dropping things today. I'm sorry. Never, never put my fingers on records, but I had to catch it. <laughs> eee. Anyway, now this is an album that I'll spin. I mean, I, I like what they did to the uh, the mixes on this. I think they mixed the songs very nicely on this 1999 re-release. And this is a case where I get a real kick out of listening to Yellow Submarine with yellow vinyl spinning, which I think is really uh, nice. Okay, uh, before I get into the memorabilia that I'm going to show, i got a couple of CD items that I want to show. Okay. First, I have this, which just came out. It's the Deluxe Edition, Collector's Edition of Paul McCartney's new album. And I love that album. I think it's really great. Um, I'm going to kind of do a mini review, I guess, at the same time here. You know, this has a book at the beginning with some pictures. And then it's got some discs here, three discs, right? First disc is the album, proper, the proper album. Second disc is, is uh, bonus material, audio. And the third disc is DVD, uh, film stuff. Now, because I love the album so much, I was really happy to get this. And for me, I'm going to say I, I played the bonus songs. On here, as much as I uh, like the, the album proper, don't like really much too many of the bonus songs. Um, well, I like uh, "Get Me Out of Here," which was already heard on an extended version. It gets confusing. An extended version of the regular album. Uh, I like "Get Me Out of Here." Uh, I don't really think much of "Turned Out." Uh, I like the song "Scared," which is an extra song. Um, not wild about struggle. And I'm not wild about uh, Hell to Pay. This song, Hell to Pay, a lot of people are really raving about that. Oh, they love it. I really don't like that, that song. Um, Demon's Dance is another new song. Demon's Dance, I think, is better. I enjoy that a little better. But anyway, not really, I think Paul made the, a wise decision in that uh, the stuff that was on the regular album was probably, in my opinion, the best of the material. Um... Maybe this stuff will grow on me a little more. I'm not wild about it. Uh, they also have a live version of Save Us, live version of the song New, live version of Queenie Eye, and a live version of Everybody Out There. Those are all nice. They're nice to have. But the real appeal to this package for me is the DVD. The DVD here um, has... Uh, the best thing is something called Something New, I think it is, which is actually the uh, making of the album. It's it's a film which is pretty long about uh, going through all the songs and you know behind the scenes footage and to me as a collector of video I mean I like I like having video as much as I do audio of the Beatles stuff Beatles related stuff so to me having that in its entirety is really 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 nice um, then you have like uh, stuff like the videos you know the videos that he did for uh, Queenie Eye Save Us uh, appreciate an early days. Now I'll tell you, um, I enjoyed the making of uh, Queenie Eye. I enjoyed the making of Early Days uh, and Appreciate. Uh, well, Appreciate I didn't like that video. wasn't wasn't so wasn't as good. But I got to tell you one thing. Watch this is the first time I've actually seen the video. You haven't. You have the videos and the making of for three of them. Uh, there's no making of video for. Uh, 
save us. That's the only one that doesn't have a making of featurette. But anyway, I like the making ofs, except, and the actual video for Appreciate with the robot actually made me appreciate the song Appreciate a little better, because for the longest time, Appreciate was only one of two songs that I really wasn't too keen on from the new album, but uh, now I like it better from the video, just seeing the video. But uh, then you get stuff on here like uh, the iHeartRadio Music Festival, just a clip. These are just clips. Then you have uh, Hollywood Boulevard with Jimmy Kimmel, NBC Studios with Jimmy Fallon. Um, you have the London Studios with Graham Norton. Uh, you have the Covent Garden at Oxford Street appearance. Now, at Times Square, New York. Now, the thing is, how do I worry? I was worried going into buying this that this was going to be stuff that I'd already seen because I already have copies of the entire the concerts of Times Square and Coventry and all those things and I have the shows I have the Graham Norton I have the BBC I have I have whatever they are the Jimmy Kimmel I have all that stuff so while it's disappointing that it's not here it works for me because this is supplemental stuff it's behind the scenes stuff and, and snippets that I don't have so I got both anyway look this is very long-winded sorry it took so long Okay, now I bought this here. Uh, this is Ringo Starr, the Icon series. Ringo Starr Icon series. They did one for John Lennon also. I didn't buy the John Lennon one for whatever reason. But what, what's interesting about this is I don't buy CDs anymore, really. I kind of stay away from them for the most part. I mean, but I heard good things about this, so I bought it. And I played it in my car on the ride home one day. And when I, when I played it, you know what struck me? What struck me is that the sound quality was so great. After listening to vinyl so much the last three years or so, I went back to this CD. I heard things on here that I never heard before. I didn't even know that Ringo had said something at the end of, I think it was your 16, uh, Who's That Drunken Sailor or something like that. He says at the end of the song, I heard things here I never heard before. And you know what? It scared me a little bit, folks. Made me go back to the days of when I first got into CDs in 1986 and got rid of my records. I said, you know... It's true, CD it does sound cleaner and better, you know. Oh, and for a minute, I almost thought I was going to just stay with CDs. But I got over that, and I, I, I like both, CDs and vinyl. But that was a real revelation, hearing this on the ride home that day. I mean, it reminded me just how good some CDs can sound. Okay, uh, at my flea market one day a while ago now, I haven't made videos for a while, I picked this up for just a... Small amount of money, considering. I wonder if they're original. They're Beatles postage stamps, and I hope they stay here and without falling out of shape. Uh, supposedly, these these are said to be from 1964, the original stamps. I hope they are. I mean, uh, I got them really cheap. I got them for fifteen dollars. You want the truth? You know, originally she wanted twenty. I I said, uh, can you go any cheaper? She said about fifteen, and I got these for fifteen. If they're original. They're pretty nice. Okay, and uh, here's uh, something that uh, I put off. I didn't really know if I needed this. How silly of me. A guy who's, who, who's a complete sure I need this. This is a book in a box by Kevin Howlett called uh, The Beatles, The BBC Archives, 1962 to 1970. There's a lot of good stuff in here, not just a book. So wait till I get to that. This is originally priced at $60, but guess what? Barnes & Noble has these on sale for $15.98 to go from $60 to $15.98. So if there's a Barnes & Nobles around you and you want this, now's the time to pounce. Okay. Inside we have... This is the book, looking like a tape reel, okay? This, I was browsing this book the other day. Nice thick book. I'll get into the book in a second. There were also, as I'm running out of time here, I see, a folder here, the BBC Archives, which has a lot of stuff that's reproduced, a lot of documents that are reproduced. You know? And... To me, it was worth it just even for this. This is the famous, uh, I don't know how well it shows up here, the famous thing where in the handwriting it says when the Beatles were like uh, auditioning or playing, it says Paul, 
Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney, no. And then it said, uh, John Lennon, yes. Uh, so, it's interesting to have this. Uh, one of the most interesting bits here, if I can find it quickly enough, and I really... Here's, well, this is, this is not what I'm looking for, but I happen to see this. From John Lennon. He wants to know... You can see his duplicate of his signature there, uh, facsimile. It says, why have you cut the only bit of real communication out of my release interview? Release is an interview that he did with Victor Spinetti in 1968. And John said a lot of stuff on it, and he felt it was cut. And this is a copy of him requesting, wanting to know, why did you cut it? And then he writes down here, or so I've heard. Um, but where's the, the real gem that I want to find? I say gem. This paperwork is really cool. This, uh, ah, this is it. I'm not going to be able to read the whole thing. I've only got like four minutes left. I'm, but I may, I may try, okay? This is a uh, copy of the original note about a day in the life, dated the 23rd of May, 1967. And it says... Uh, this is uh, Frank Gillard from the Director of Sound Broadcasting uh, writing to Sir Joseph Lockwood, the chairman of EMI House. He says, regarding uh, Dear Sir Joseph, about a day in the life, the song, I never thought the day would come when we would have to put a ban on an EMI record, but sadly, that is what has happened over this track. We have listened to it over and over again with great care and we cannot avoid coming to the conclusion that the words I'd love to turn you on followed by that mounting montage of sound could have a rather sinister meaning. The recording may have been in innocence may have been made in innocence and good faith but we must take account of the interpretation that many young people would inevitably put upon it. Turned on is a phrase which can be used in many different circumstances but it is currently much in vogue in the jargon of the drug addicts. We do not feel that we can take the responsibility of appearing to favor or encourage those unfortunate habits. And that is why we shall not be playing the recording in any of our programs, radio or television. I expect we shall meet with some embarrassment over this decision, which has already been noted by the press. We will do our best not to appear to be criticizing your people, but as you will realize, we do find ourselves in a very difficult position. I thought you would like to know why we have, most reluctantly, taken this decision. Warmest regards, yours ever, Frank Gillard, Director of Sound Broadcasting. <laughs> I mean, that's great. I mean, you believe that? Anyway, so I'm, I'm just to have all these... There's all, all these trinkets. In fact, there's even some paperwork here. Uh, I don't know. They call them an audience research report where audience reaction to certain performances by the early Beatles and stuff, you know, on a, on a grade of A plus, A, B, C or C minus, and a couple of audience reaction surveys of the day. Apparently the BBC held on to everything. So they have, uh, you know, facsimiles of the originals. I haven't even gotten to the book yet. I've only got a minute and change left. So that's, that's okay. I would just say, well, there's great photos in here for one thing. This is a complete history of the BBC stuff that the Beatles did. I'm going to, you know, I can't possibly show everything here. All I can tell you is, if you're a Beatles fan, you got to get this. You know, now, after looking at it, even the full price of 60 bucks is worth it. It's, it's an essential book. I'm not really doing it justice. I'm not getting to a lot of good photos. There are a lot of good photos, some of which I haven't seen before here. And uh, one in particular, if I can possibly find it, I will, But as I run out of time. Um, but, uh, yeah, $60, 60 would even have been worth it looking at this now. But uh, certainly for fifteen ninety eight. Okay, as I run out of time here, I like this picture I've never seen before of Paul McCartney examining the Aftermath album by the Rolling Stones. And on this page, there's John displaying the Aftermath album and George checking out a 45 by the Stones on Decca. So, thanks a lot for watching, folks. And uh, take care. Hopefully it won't be too long. 
before I make a video, but we'll see how that goes.